So welcome back to Thought for the Day. And we're going to begin looking at a series about the life of David from the Old Testament, um, particularly from Samuel, uh, and then just a little bit into 1 Kings. Um, so before we begin that, we're going to commit our time to the Lord. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, as we come to you this morning, we ask that you would open your word to us. We may pray that we might understand more, uh, yes, about the life of David, but uh, about how David points us to the Lord Jesus Christ and how he helps us to understand ourselves in these days. So we pray, Lord, that you do your work in our midst and, Lord, that you would be gracious to us for Jesus' sake. Amen. So I'm just going to read to you one verse from uh, 1 Samuel 16, and I'm going to read verse 7. Um, it comes in the context of Samuel looking for the next king of Israel, um, and he's looking at the brothers of uh, David, who is to become king. Um, and as he looks at them, they look quite good, they look like a good option. Um, but this is what God says to him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So as we're going to come to think about the life of David, let's just have a think about how we come to be. We are at the particular uh, point as we read uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16. The history of Israel, as it were, is up to this point. If you remember, that they had gone into Egypt. They'd been persecuted while they're in Egypt. They've grown in great multitude. God, in his grace, delivers them through Moses. They uh, cross the wilderness, takes them more time than it should have done, but they eventually end up in the promised land, the land of Canaan. So they go into the land of Canaan. Joshua is used by God to conquer the land, and uh, uh, finally the people are settled into the land. Uh, but when they're settled in the land, they uh, begin to do their own thing, really. They begin to forget about God, begin to do exactly what they pleased. Well, that period is punctuated by uh, those that God raises up to uh, rule over the people or to um, lead the people uh, in that particular time. They're called judges. Um, as we come into the time of the kings, what we discover is that uh, the last judge, who is Samuel, um, is wanted uh, or the people want to replace him as judge they want their own king they want to do their own thing they want God to uh, give them a king and so uh, they seek one um, and God gives them a king he gives them just exactly what they want he looks exactly like a king should he has all of uh, the characteristics that uh, uh, you know a good looking king should have and Samuel uh, chooses Saul and Saul is to be the king and he's head and shoulders above the rest he looks the part um, and he uh, leads the people of Israel well it all starts off quite well and then it goes badly wrong because King Saul uh, he doesn't want to have anything really to do with God the power goes to his head he just wants to do what pleases himself and so in the end uh, God decides that he will take the kingdom away from Saul I'll take the kingdom away from Saul um, and that he'll give it to another so we come into this particular point uh, when we come to think about the life of David, uh, Saul disobeys God. God takes the kingdom or tells him that he'll take the kingdom away from him. And he tells Samuel that he is to anoint a new king. So Samuel is instructed to go and find this new king. Um, who will God's chosen king be? That's the big question as we come into this passage. Um, and we have that answer. It's going to be one of Jesse's sons. It's going to be one of Jesse's sons. So which son will it be? Well, Samuel would have fallen into the trap. Um, that the people uh, had fallen into, really, that he was looking for one that looked like a king, he, who had the right poise and the stature and, and all the kind of things that you might expect a king to have. And so he is uh, with uh, Jesse's family, and Eliab comes before him. Um, and so as he's looking at Eliab, he thinks, well, surely this man is going to be the king. This man looks exactly the part. Uh, he carries himself like a king should. Um, we'll, well, I'll, I'll anoint him. Well, God at that moment speaks, and he speaks that verse that we read. You know, God doesn't look at the outward appearance. He looks at the heart. He's interested in one who has a heart for himself. Um, Samuel judges by looks alone, but God wants the heart. And what kind of a heart is it that God is looking for? Well, Acts tells us, doesn't it? Acts chapter 13 and verse 22. God considers David, uh, as he, as it turns out to be David, uh, to be a man after his own heart. Now, what does God uh, look for in the leader of his people? Well, he looks for a heart, a heart that wants to please God, a heart that wants to do what God wants, a heart 
captivated by the wonder and the majesty of God. That's what he's looking for. That's what he requires. And so uh, when uh, David comes along, eventually he comes before Samuel. In, it wasn't his stature. It isn't the way that he looks, uh, although the looks are mentioned in the passage. Uh, but it's not the way that he looks. It's the fact that he has a heart for God. The fact that he wants to do what pleases God. Um, one who will not be swayed by wealth and power. One who will uh, follow God regardless of the situation or the circumstances. Um, and that's exactly where we end up when David comes along. He is one who is a man after God's own heart. He is God's choice. Uh, how do we know that? Well, we know that because... David the psalmist, David the one who went out with the sheep onto the hills as he was all alone. And what's he doing while he's there? Well, he's reflecting on who God is. He's reflecting on the character of God and the wonder of God. And we know that when we read the Psalms, don't we? We delight in what David has written for us as he tells us about the wonder of his God, the majesty of his God. Uh, David's looks are secondary, as it were, in the passage. Yes, he's he's good looking and, uh, you know, that doesn't go against him. But it's actually the, the state of his heart that is the key issue that is being considered in David's life as to whether he should be king. Well, the, the two things that David helped us to understand as we think about this little passage, uh, David points us to Jesus Christ. He is a, a type of Christ, the type of the one to come, one who will rule over God's people. He is, um, as it were, the type that points forth, forward to the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, whereas um, David is a man after God's own heart, um, but he's a fallen man, he points to the one who would follow, who truly is a man after God's own heart, and it's the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the one who will always do what God the Father wants, the one who will never turn aside and do wrong, but will continually seek to do what God has called him to, and carry that through right to its conclusion. Now, what's God's plan for Jesus? Well, we know that's ultimately to die on the cross and to bear the punishment for our sin, that uh, we might be forgiven and that we might be justified in God's sight. So here, David points us to the ultimate king. Second thing, whatever you think matters in this life, whatever it is that you think that you've got before you today that is of such great concern, actually the thing that matters to God is the state of your heart, the state of where you are before him, where you are walking with him, what you are doing, uh, as it were, to respond to his majesty and his glory and, uh, and to seek him. So uh, what David shows us is that we should be those who seek after God with our hearts, that we should be those that seek to have him part of our lives first thing that we need to do is have our hearts made right we need to repent of our sin and seek the lord jesus christ as our savior we need to be those that recognize that we cannot be right with god that our hearts aren't right with god until we have trusted the lord jesus christ when we've trusted the lord jesus christ well then it doesn't stop there um, the devil wants to uh, manipulate us and to turn us away from the things of christ he wants us to be those that uh, allow the things of this life the things that are seen and touched to become more important than the things of Christ. Well, we need to watch over our own hearts and make sure that that isn't the case. Um, Proverbs helps us to understand that, doesn't it? Proverbs 4 and verse 23. Uh, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. You know, if you can't keep your heart, if you're not prepared to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, accept the cleansing and the forgiveness of the Lord Jesus Christ and to walk with him all the days of your life, then your heart will eventually get you into trouble. It will eventually stand you before God and bring you to that place where you are condemned by God if your heart is not right with him. So as Christians, we trust the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sin and we trust God each day. We continue to walk out in faith, trusting him and he will protect us and keep us. He is the one who will be able to make us stand uh, perfect stand righteous in God's sight when it comes to that day of judgment so as we look to David we look to the king who is to come the Lord Jesus Christ or the king who has come as from our perspective and we look to the fact that our hearts need to be right with God uh, and so we walk in the step, footsteps of David as it were and we seek to make our heart right with God through trusting in his only son the Lord Jesus the promised Messiah let's pray Loving Father, as we have thought about your word this morning, we've thought about David, we ask, Lord, that we might be like him, that, that we might be said of us that, our, uh, that we are men after, or men and women after God's own heart, Lord, that we would put him first and seek him in these days, Lord, that more than that, that we would guard our hearts um, and seek to make sure that we are in 
a good relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So we pray that you'd help us with this, and we thank you for our time this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.